Okay. Uh, do you play video games? Yeah. Uh, okay, how many of you? Can you just play? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all full of gamers. Okay. So, nice to see you all. Uh, I don't play video games anymore. <laughs> so, I used to be a gamer. I used to play a lot of games, different kind of games. Uh, but right now, uh, to be honest, I'm actually kind of uh, saying this for the first time. Uh, playing them seems to be a waste of time for me. Actually, it's kind of like a time pass on the kind of thing. Like, a, I feel kind of really bored about them. So, so, what is happening? I'm here to actually investigate all that with this. As I grew up, something happened. Like, game was like a kid who don't grow up. You know, as I grew up, it didn't grow up with me. It kind of stuck in a, in a age. So gradually, we got disconnected sometimes. And right now, I'm, I always wonder, I, I wonder, I'm wondering like, why are there are no games or very few games for like complicated adult minds? Like, which are thoughtful, which are meaningful. Only a game only for kids or something similar to that. So <coughs> first, I start to understand why about this question. Like, are games kind of positioned as a kind of kids toy or something like that? Kids only media or something like that? But why? Like, adults are consumer of any other type of media like. Movies, music, mm, art, poetry, literature. Why there are not so many games which can actually appeal to our adult mind? Like complicated things, like with the real world issues, with stuff that really matters to our adult, not as a kid, only not only fantasy. So adults also are consumer of board games. Board games are a big thing among among adult minds. They enjoy that. But why not video games? Why, why, when coming video games, if you say, see an adult playing video games, you just take it for granted he's playing with a kid toy, something like that. So how come we come to this with a kind of powerful medium like video games? So next thing I am wanting to understand from a technical perspective, like are video games kind of limited in some way? Like, uh, if not fit enough to actually portray depth of its expression, emotions of different kinds, it seems to be uh, seems to hard to believe because uh, video games is kind of culmination of all kind of art and literature and music and animation. So you can write the greatest novel inside a video game, compose the greatest music for a video game, or make wonderful art for a video game. So that cannot be an excuse. Then there was an argument I got into where they told that keep video, video game as entertainment. Don't categorize it as art or something like that. Just a lesser form of expression. It seems very, as a game developer, it seems very kind of humiliating for me Especially treat video games as a kind of like a kid thing which cannot be taken to its death. It can go. Oh. So I uh, wanted to ask them the what what is the what is your argument? Like why video games cannot do the thing a painting can do, a literature can do, or movies can. So the argument is uh, when you make a painting or a art or any literature or something like that, the creator puts forward a single point of perspective, like single expressions and what to tell us something across. In video games, there is a control of the player. The player has the agency to experience the video game the way he or she wants. So that is kind of making all the difference. Why? Because Supposedly, the creator wants it to be 
sold some in some way, but the player doesn't want it to experience in that way. That's why something in there cannot be told. But as, as I got into depth of the game designing, I understood that this argument actually doesn't hold. Yeah, there are choices in the video game. You can play it as you want. But it's well within the creative territory of the game designer. It never goes outside it. <laughs> like a chess board, you cannot go outside a chess board. You have to stay over there. Whatever you can do, it's well designed by the game designer that you cannot do more than this. Anything else than this. So, video, making video games is like, from an earth perspective, you are putting your player in a painting gallery. He can see this painting, or that painting, or that painting. But it's all your creation, the creation of the painter. It never makes it a lesser art or something like that. So, in all this argument about what video game is, what video game is not, I thought we were missing the point. The point is, games are supposed to make us, make us more understandable of real life. Like a soldier plays war games to actually simulate battles and understand the battles. Even a tiger cub plays with his mother to prepare for hunting. So what does video games prepare us for? Nothing. It's just kind of zero calorie. Like without any nutrients and all. How come this has happened? Video games are supposed to be, games are supposed to be, video games are supposed to be enriching us and teaching us to how to actually live your life and be more understandable of it. Rather than that, they are kind of, they're kind of doing all kind of things like escapism, like how to escape your life and go into a band of the thing and spend your time there. It doesn't actually help in understanding the real life, right? Escapism doesn't actually work out. It's a temporary solution which actually gets back to you. The reality, when the reality hits back to you, you are in a worse position than before. So, is, are they actually helping the society in some way? I dare to actually ask that question. And I found the answer in the history of video games. I'll tell you, this is very important. Video games are manufactured. Art, poetry, literature are not. Video games were first done by hardware manufacturers who made arcades, consoles, stuff like that. And to sell those things, they have to put video games into it. And the first games were 8 was 8 bit graphics. I'm sure you must have known about that or played some of the 8 bit graphics games. The Mario and all. So, the scope of doing something with 8 bit graphics was very limited. So, what happened? The, the big, they made little fun toys with the limitations of the graphics and all, the technology and all. And that actually became big and they kind of made a lot of money. And from that, the companies were actually stuck there forever to actually only selling our uh, his video games as fun toys, not anything more. Like, they never explored anywhere else. That's not how company works actually. They kind of decide and develop their businesses upon processes, you know. Like, not individualism or something like that. Not radical thinking or something like that. What they already have accumulated as a process of developing games, they refine that over and over again. For a moment, let's understand if that would have happened to any other form of expression, like art, poetry, or whatever, like companies manufacturing painting or manufacturing music or something like that. Like this could art or be. Literature can manufacture or something like that? No. Never. So, companies are going to do that.
continue to do that. They are going to make fun game. Chef shooter, chef jumper, something not for the mind, something just for fun. And no social impact at all, of nothing at all. For the social impact, the company, some of the companies doesn't even have social responsibility. Sometimes they get into gambling and stuff to actually attract more users, more players and stuff like that. So let's not expect anything from them. So what will happen to us who grow, who grew up from video as a gamer and couldn't find anything for us in can a, which can be uh, enjoyed in a in a good sense? <laughs> So, yeah, what will happen? <laughs> something has happened. During the last 10 years, something has happened. The disruption has taken place. I'm here to make you aware of that also. From 2006 7, after the iPhone came, the disruption took place in a large scale. First, what happened? The game engine, the 3D asset or 2D asset making tools, they all got free. You can actually use them for free now. They were not free. They couldn't have been actually afforded by anybody else than company. An individual couldn't afford to make it. Now he can. A new kind of users have came in to smart, smartphones and tablets and all. They haven't played games before, they were consumer of other form of entertainment. They have came in, these non gamers have produced so much diversity into the market, you can actually tell them anything if it fits into their mind. And lastly, the distribution channel has opened up globally. Ten years back, it was not possible to make anything in Calcutta and sell anything in US. Now you can make games shop anywhere in the world and sell it anywhere. So it has opened up massively. So how did we game develop reacted to this democracy of video game development? Did we actually conceive original ideas, unique ideas and put it across to the world? Actually no. I thought you did but actually no. We, individual game developers or small groups, actually follow the same way the companies use to make games. Make little kiddy toys, fun games or something like that. Nothing of value, you know. Oh, we hope like <laughs> we will be making money as the companies do. So everybody started making lots of games, similar kind of games. We just targeted uh, at a particular around a particular theme called fun, not any other emotion. So gradually the market got saturated. <laughs> there are too many in one little form. This oversaturation resulted a kind of prophecy of video game doomsday kind of thing. Like video game industry is going to collapse because nobody is sustaining, nobody is kind of making any money right now. <laughs> it's a bad situation. Thing over here, as we said, like the pressure is enormous right now, for, and it's open to everybody, every game developer in, in the world. They have to think otherwise. The situation is good. <coughs> the bed is kind of made. You got free tools, asset making tools, everything is free right now. Now you can think without any hurdles, you don't have to invest anything to actually make experimentation, radical experimentation. So, in this moment, we are seeing a new kind of game developing, new form of game developing. I am not sure this can be called video games at all, because they are so different, terming them as video games makes them very serious. We are seeing games with the theme of like Syrian refugee crisis. <laughs> with a theme of immigration in a darker way. 
with the theme of human trafficking. I have been fortunate enough to actually get associated and design a game based on human trafficking. And the reaction of the audience changed it all. It was made in several languages, Indian languages and all. Especially, it got the first languages which what we did, what we did apart from English was Bengal. So, in here and in Bangladesh, they kind of were playing games in a new way and they were kind of astounded by it. So we understood that the potential of the thing is nobody ventured into this kind of segment where games can be made in a meaningful way. Whatever the game missing is, it's not zero calorie. You, what I, as a game designer of that game, I can promise you one thing. You will not remain the same after playing the game. Any good literature, music, you should do that. That we couldn't say about other kind of games, fun only games at all. You finish the game, it's done. It doesn't add any value to you. So, these games actually where people try to turn these games as previous games, games for change, or something like that. But when turning them as a video game, again people are just like, oh, it's a kid toy, video game, what is that? They need a kind of, they, they need a kind of, this kind of new kind of game, need a new name for all, like completely a new name. Like video game, the video game is kind of <laughs> going from a butterfly, going to a butterfly from a caterpillar. It's kind of cocooned inside so by these corporations and all. Right now, it's kind of breaking the scene. And as Indian game developers, we, I feel strongly like we have a certain part to play over here. Because you, India is a place where you can find most varied, varied kind of human story rather than technology. Like in Germany, they love like simulation game, any kind of simulation. Stop. India is almost people, people's story. So, there is your chance to go for a game, to make something in that this juncture that will put us into the front row of video game industry. Also, there is a chance for the audience to rename video games in a new way. These kind of games cannot be called video games. People will resist the thing if they expect something like video games from this kind of game. It's, it's, they need this child, this butterfly. A caterpillar cannot be called caterpillar. So, think about it. This we have something to do over here. The field is open and it's perfect for India. Thank you.